Dr. David G. Harper is an Associate Professor of Kinesiology at the University of the Fraser Valley. As a health educator and cancer researcher, Dr. Harper has studied the impact of diet on human health for many years. The culmination of that extensive work is the BioDiet, a ketogenic food regimen that he created in 2012. The significant weight loss and health improvements he experienced led Dr. Harper to counsel hundreds of people on the BioDiet in clinical trials and on a personal basis. His present research investigates the therapeutic benefits of ketogenic diet for women with metastatic breast cancer. Welcome to Modern Healthspan, and uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me uh, on your program. So, uh, Dr. Harper, you are the author of this book, The, the Bio Diet, and uh, so I've just finished it. I find it very interesting. I like the way that it actually it has the science at the beginning, so explain how, how everything works, and then the practical steps for how to implement a uh, ketogenic diet in a safe way. So can you give us a bit of background as to why you became a keto advocate and mm. wrote and then wrote this book? Sure. And I should mention my, my wife is the co-author. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of science in it. She's a journalist and she helped make it kind of user friendly and a little more approachable. And, and uh, um, yeah, we think we've been, we've got a pretty nice engaging uh, how to and why to book uh, in bio diet. Um, and, and if, if your listeners want to have a look, they can go to biodiet.org. There's lots of uh, free stuff and resources there as well. Um, so I, I was actually doing um, uh, a, a radio show called Think for Yourself, which is about critical reasoning. This is now oh, almost, uh, well, more than 10 years ago anyway. Um, we had on a guest uh, named Dr. Richard Mathias, who's a um, emeritus professor of, uh, a physician and an emeritus professor of the School of Public Health at the University of British Columbia here in Vancouver, where I live. Um, and uh, we were talking about what's the best way to lose and manage weight. Is it exercise or is it diet? And um, I'm a associate professor of kinesiology at the University of the Fraser Valley. Um, and so I, because of that, I, would, I was taking the exercise side and, and Dr. Richard Mathias uh, uh, took the other side. And, and so uh, we were sort of talking about, you know, I, up until that time, I had believed that what we call the standard Western diet was a healthy diet, you know, high carb, low fat, uh, relatively low protein. Um, and, you know, the usual fruits and vegetables and beans and legumes and all that sort of thing. Um, um, but personally, I was, uh, you know, I wasn't overweight, but I was starting to gain weight, especially mid-abdominal weight. Um, you know, my blood pressure was still okay, but it was creeping up. My blood sugar was okay, but it was creeping up. And, you know, I was sort of getting close to middle age. And I was thinking that uh, maybe these are just the normal things that happen when you age. And, and uh, so during this uh, conversation, uh, Dr. Matthias asked me, um, you know, what do you think causes obesity? And, and we were on air at the time, this is a live radio broadcast. And, and I, I sort of gave him the party line, which is it's a you know, multifactorial complex uh, metabolic response to, uh, you know, genetic factors and psychosocial factors and so on. He just sat there quietly and listened to me while I blabbed on. And when I was finished, he just said, uh, uh, no, it's not. It's your body's uh, natural physiological response to excess carbohydrate in the diet. And um, <laughs> Richard, I have to say, I'm on the air and I couldn't speak. And, 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 and you know, I call that dead air. And, you know, my co-host was ribbing me and, and, and I said, um, what was happening in my head, I've been a physiologist all my life. Uh, you know, I studied comparative physiology at UBC and then in Woods Hole and at Cambridge University. And um, what was happening was I, I, as he said those words, my brain was instantly processing that as, oh my God, he's right, but it can't be that simple, but what if it is? And that was when I fell down the rabbit hole, um, you know, and, and, uh, and I uh, quickly got, um, started doing some research at the BC Cancer Research Center. Um, I did my own work with, uh, with, with uh, subjects as well, look, helping them with weight loss. And, and what I was realizing was the weight loss was happening, the fat loss was happening. Um, but also more importantly, I was seeing the reversal of chronic disease. I was seeing people that were diabetic, not needing their medication anymore. People that were hypertensive, not needing their medication anymore. People that have had mood issues, resolving themselves, sleep issues, uh, skin problems, all kinds of things. I, I had no expectation. I just thought it was a good way to lose weight. And, and so then I, I, I started, I, I uh, was introduced to, uh, Dr. Jerry Crystal at the BC Cancer Research Center. Uh, he'd been working on 
uh, the therapeutic benefits of low carbohydrate and ketogenic diets to help prevent cancer. Um, and I'd been working with humans. And so we've been teamed up ever since. And um, we also teamed up with uh, uh, Dr. Jeff Volok, who some of your readers, if they understand ketogenic diets, Dr. Volok and Dr. Steve Finney, uh, they sort of met me at the other end of that rabbit hole and they provided some guidance. And uh, so right now we're uh, finishing a three-year um, uh, research study on the therapeutic benefits of ketogenic diets for women with metastatic breast cancer. Um, I presented some, I'm not the, I'm not the principal investigator on that, so it's not really professional of me to speak to the details of the findings because they're incomplete at the moment. Um, COVID kind of slowed down those human to human studies. Um, but uh, there's a talk I gave uh, actually just before the world changed on, uh, it was actually March 14th, uh, right after Friday the 13th last year, uh, I was in Denver and uh, just made it back into Canada uh, after that. Um, so I gave the keynote address that morning. So if they look up my name, David Harper and, and uh, Low Carb Denver, uh, that was the conference. Uh, you can see my talk about cancer research. And I do speak there a little bit at the end about the potential benefits uh, to protect against COVID too, which of course is is very topical. So that's a, it's been a very, it's been a 10 year, uh, 10 year journey. So that was my, that's my encapsulated mm. version of how that all happened. Right. Thank you. So one, it's kind of side question on that. So is there any research, you said there was kind of this research going on uh, about women with uh, breast cancer. Uh, is there any research on healthy people? Uh, you know, it's kind of harder to do research on healthy people, but for healthy people doing keto. Um, Oh, sure, there is. There's, all, there's, there's quite a bit of research. I mean, the, the research on cancer is, is, is what we call emerging science. We don't have any, you know, we're doing some gold standard uh, studies, but we don't really have a lot of results. They're mostly uh, small sample size and so on. There's good evidence in some, there's about probably about three dozen areas in which um, we are looking for the therapeutic benefits for different diseases. We can talk about that later, but yeah. healthy individuals, I, you know, I was one sample size of one, you know, N equals one. I was not unhealthy. I didn't have any comorbidities, wasn't taking any medication, but I dropped um, to, before, I, before I sort of prescribed this diet to anybody else, I wanted to do it myself with my wife because it seemed crazy eating all this saturated fat and you know getting rid of things that were supposed to be good for us. Um, and I was concerned. So I went to my physician, I talked to him about it. We did a DEXA test, we did all the blood work. Um, so we'd have a benchmark and we did it again 12 weeks later. And I, I, uh, I, was, I was really delightfully surprised. I, I'd lost 27 pounds of body fat, mid-abdominal body fat. And again, I wasn't overweight at the time, but I, and I still weigh within one pound of what I lost uh, 10 years later. Um, and I, uh, I, I, all of my markers for uh, chronic disease, you know, all the blood lipids, all the uh, blood pressure, the blood sugar, all that stuff improved it, dramatically to the point where you know, by some measures of biological age, I'm, I'm, I'm more like half my age. I'm, I'm, I'm 60 as I look at you now, but I, my biological age is, is more like 30. Um, right. and, and I feel great. Um, and that's the one thing that's consistent in all the people I've counseled, uh, which, uh, you know, is in the hundreds, not, certainly not thousands, but like some others, but um, uh, everybody feels better. Like their, their mm -hmm. sense of well-being is greatly improved, probably due to the effects of the ketones on, on their brains. Um, so healthy people, uh, they have done lots of studies because we actually look at athletic performance and, and Dr. Volek has done a lot of work on that, um, athletic performance in particular endurance performance. Uh, he's doing some on resistance performance as well. Um, uh, so it does have benefits there as well. Um, no, both in terms of athletic performance, but in terms of, uh, improving the markers for chronic disease too. Excellent. Yeah. We may, may come back to that. Um, mm. so keto What's your definition of ketogenic diet? And mm. I mean, I think there's, there's some kind of width um, area. And, and so where would bio diet fit within kind of the ketogenic universe? Uh, right. So bio diet is what we call a well-formulated uh, ketogenic diet. Um, and, and that's a term that was coined by Dr. Stephen Finney. And what it means is that it provides full nutrition. So it's, uh, it's based on real food. Uh, no processed food, essentially, um, unless you consider wine and cheese to be processed, but, you know, fermentation is a good thing. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, in moderation, of course, um, it's all, you know, fresh, real food, meat, vegetables, it's, you know, omnivore diet. Um, the reason it's ketogenic is it's very, very low on carbohydrates. So, so there's a class of low carbohydrate diets. And, and when you or your listeners are researching this, 
you know, a lot of the, a lot of the um, evidence, especially uh, more than 10 years old, which we don't tend to pay much attention to, a lot of it is low carb and low carb, uh, all ketogenic diets are low carb, but not all low carb diets are ketogenic. Um, so you have to, you know, anything below about probably 40% of calories from carbohydrate is low carb. But if those 40% of the calories are still crappy things like, you know, pop and sugar and, 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 you know, refined flours and things like that, and you're mixing that with saturated fats, the outcome isn't going to be good. So, um, in order to get yourself into a state of nutritional ketosis, where you, you switch your metabolism from primarily a sugar burning or a glucose based metabolism to a fat based metabolism, what we call it the cell level beta oxidation, um, you need to reduce your carbohydrate intake for most people below about 5% of total calories, which is, which is very, very low carb. When, it, when you're eating, you know, some vegetables and nuts, things are going to have a little bit of it anyway. So this meat has a little bit of it. Liver has a little bit more. Um, so you really have to get rid of all the rice, pasta, bread, um, starchy vegetables, all those root vegetables. Um, you, you, you don't eat those on a ketogenic diet. And that will in time for most people, um, uh, create a state of nutritional ketosis. Um, and I say that because if you, if there's any um, physicians or healthcare workers in your audience, they're often taught about ketoacidosis, which is a very dangerous side effect of uncontrolled diabetes. This is a very different thing. This is nutritional ketosis, which is the natural production of ketones that occurs when you're burning fats instead of sugars. And the ketones themselves are very beneficial. And, and uh, you know, an ideal ratio, essentially what you're doing is you're trading off keto, you're trading off sugar in the blood for ketones. Mm -hmm. And an ideal ratio is around one, you know, you have for every uh, glucose molecule you're burning, you're burning a, a beta hydroxybutyrate ketone molecule. Um, your brain loves that, your heart loves that. Uh, it seems to be mimicking a more natural human diet from our evolutionary history. Um, some people say, you know, there isn't any long-term uh, data on ketogenic diets. My answer is, how do you think we got here? Uh, humans evolved <laughs> over millions of years, and there wasn't a lot of cornflakes and pizza in that diet. It was uh, it was a meat first diet. Um, so on that point, you know, carnivore diet is definitely ketogenic. Mm -hmm. um, so if it is if it is stimulating the production of ketones, which can be measured uh, initially, you can use those keto strips. You know, the sort of things that you urinate on. Uh, but but once you're keto adapted, you'll be burning those. So then. You know, there's breath tests that work pretty good now. Uh, blood test is still kind of the, the, the standard that we use uh, with our patients. They, they take uh, blood samples every day to see what their, their level of ketosis is. Um, and um, so you can, uh, you can determine whether you are or not. And, and for some people, it's easier to get into this nutritional ketosis. It just takes days to weeks. Other people, it can take quite a bit longer. So you have to be patient and you have to be committed uh, when you, when you uh, adopt this. Right. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.